In today's video, I'm going to recap the top 80 construction terms that I use and hear on an ongoing basis because construction is such a large industry which encapsulates all different types of businesses and projects. Not every single one of these will be fully relevant to you, but I'm hoping that you'll be left with some new information that'll help you understand what I'm talking about in some of my future videos. Let's go. ADA, American Disability Act. This set forth codes and standards for public use buildings to ensure design of those buildings meets certain accessibility requirements. AE, Architect Engineer. This is the firm or firms who put together the construction documents, usually referred to as the engineer and architect of record, and whose name appears on the building permit when it's issued for any particular project. AFF, or above finished floor. The construction drawings should provide you with an elevation that your slab or finished floor will be at. If, for instance, you have a mirror that says four foot AFF, pointing to the bottom of the mirror on your plans, it just means that the bottom of the mirror should be installed four feet above the finished floor elevation. It's just a baseline point of reference to use. AIA, American Institute of Architects. They're mostly known for producing the AIA contract templates, which help standardize construction contracts within the industry. As-builts. As-builts are documents produced at the end of construction to capture locations and dimensions of installations or alterations to the construction documents. For example, your site electrical drawings don't show where every single cable or conduit needs to be run from point A to point B. So the purpose of these as-builts is to reflect exactly how the contractor installed those conduits and where they were installed. ASTM, or the American Standard of Testing Materials, is an international standards organization that publishes technical standards for a wide range of materials, products, systems, and services. This is to ensure buildings are getting built to a particular standard. BAC and BAS, Building Automation and Control and Building Automation Systems. It's the brains of the building that controls the electric and mechanical systems behind the scenes via computer software. This helps the facilities and maintenance team employees know when to service equipment, set times and parameters to run equipment, and so on and so forth. Back charge. Company A screws up and needs Company B to fix it. Well, Company B back charges the cost to Company A to pay for it. It's a transfer of funds, which is usually the result of a mistake. Bid package. Large projects are usually broken up into different scopes of work. A bid package is a summary of what scope of work is included and excluded. Your electrical bid package has everything specific to electrical scope. Your plumbing bid package has everything usually included with your plumbing scope. BIM or Building Information Modeling. As construction technology advances, buildings are more often getting drawn using 3D software, which produces a model of the building. The term BIM is still used, but it's phasing out to what we now typically call VDC, which I'll cover later in this list. Blueprints. The construction industry doesn't use this term, but this is reference to the construction plans or drawings. It's still commonly used by people outside of construction because of the notable blue drawing sheet that became synonymous with construction. Bonds. I'll cover this specifically in another video, but for simplicity, a bond is a written agreement involving two or three parties to ensure that if one party fails to meet their obligations, the bonding company will step in to ensure those obligations are met. The three types of bonds in construction are a bid bond, a performance bond, and a payment bond. Builder's risk, a specialized type of property insurance that ensures the coverage of the building during the construction phase. This could cover fire, vandalism, or other aspects that could impact or damage the building. CAD or computer-aided design. So I talked about BIM and VDC earlier. CAD is just another term used to describe drawing details using computer software. Autodesk is the most popular provider of CAD software within the construction industry. CD, which is short for construction drawing or construction documents. It's just that. When you hear someone say CDs, they're referring back to the construction drawings. CM or construction manager. This can be a firm or general terminology for a variety of roles within the industry. Construction managers are responsible for planning, coordinating, budgeting, and supervising the projects from start to finish. The CO or a change order. Change order is when the owner or architect changes aspects of the construction documents, therefore changing the aspects of the contract. This may result in a price increase or a price decrease or a schedule increase or schedule decrease. A CO or change order is just the formal submission of these costs and schedule impacts to the owner. A COI or a certificate of insurance. Simple enough, it's just making sure everyone's covered if there was an unforeseen accident. There are many types of insurance coverage policies in construction, which I'll cover in a separate video. CPM or critical path method is a scheduling technique that shows you the longest sequence it would take for construction activities to take place. Many activities on a job site can happen at the same time. However, a critical path shows what activities must happen before the next activity can start, 
which creates a schedule with zero float. This essentially means how long it'll take to get the building done from point A to point Z and nothing in between. CSI or Construction Specifications Institute developed a standard layout for construction specifications which we see in the construction documents. I talk about this specifically in my specifications video if you haven't yet seen that. CX or commissioning is the process of starting up and testing newly installed building systems and equipment to ensure that they are operating per the drawings and specifications. You do it to make sure that the owner is getting what they paid for at the end of the job. DB or design build, it's a method of project delivery in which one team being your design team and your construction team will work under a single contract with the owner. The thought process behind this project delivery method is so that the design team and the construction team are set up to work together to provide a better service to the owner. DBB or design bid build is the more traditional approach to a project delivery method in which the design team has its own contract with the owner as does the construction team. DD or design development. This is the set of plans prior to CDs or the actual construction drawings which are roughly 90% complete but still being finalized before release. Delegated design. Architects and engineers can delegate Parts of construction design to specialized contractors which actually produce their own license and stamp designs for the project. It shifts responsibility from the design team to the contractor. DWG is a drawing file type. Earlier I talked about CAD, Computer Aided Design. DWG is a native file format similar to a .pdf or a .jpeg for architects and engineer drawing sets. They're converted by the architect to PDF for the use of construction. DIM or Dimension. You'll see this on a construction drawing or shop drawings, which is just a short acronym for Dimension. EOR or the Engineer of Record. This is another acronym for the Engineer of Record, again, which I talked about earlier, whose firm's name appears on the design and permit set of plans. FF, finished floor. I talked about AFF earlier, which is above finished floor. FF is just your finished floor, which is another baseline referenceable elevation. FM or facilities management. This is the group or team that operates the building after the construction phase. They're brought in at the tail end of the project by the construction team to go through what the construction industry calls owner training. This is the transfer of knowledge so that they understand how the building and specific equipment is to be operated and maintained. FP, pretty simple, it just stands for floor plan. Nothing more, nothing less, just an acronym if you see it on the drawing set or anywhere else. GC or general contractor is the main or prime contractor responsible for the oversight of construction. They may have both self-perform work and subcontractors working for them. GMP or guaranteed maximum price. This is a type of owner contractor agreement in which the dollar amount reflects the highest amount of labor, materials, and profit a contractor contractor can charge. If there is a scope increase or decrease, your total GMP value can actually go up or down based on that. HVAC just stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. These are your mechanical systems on the project that provide and cycle heating and cooling throughout the building. IBC is the International Building Code. It's just the standards for code requirements internationally. Every five or six years, the IBC releases an updated code book based on changes within the evolution of construction and building safety. IFC issued for construction. After the bidding process, the IFC or issued for construction set are the drawings that have been prepared prepared for actual construction. ILO or in lieu of. You'll see this in RFIs and shop drawings. It's an acronym when proposing another option outside of the construction documents. IPD or integrated project delivery is another project delivery method that incorporates a much larger group of people to assist in both the design and construction portion of the project. Lien. In construction, a lien is a claim on a property when contractors have not been paid for work that they've completed. It's to ensure that contractors get paid and hold owners financially responsible. L-O-T-O, lockout, tagout. Lockout, tagout is when an electrician is working or providing a service, they place a lock on the breaker at the panel so someone doesn't flip it on accidentally while they're trying to complete their work. It's used as a safety precaution. L-O-I, letter of intent. Prior to the contract issuance, but to keep the schedule of a project progressing, a letter of intent may be used in good faith to award the contractor so they can move forward with planning and execution of the project. This is followed up with the actual contract. LS or lump sum. GMP or guaranteed maximum price can generate cost savings to the owner if the construction team didn't utilize the entire budget throughout the project. LS or lump sum is usually referred to as hard bid, where the upfront price doesn't necessarily show as much backup as you would see in a GMP estimate, but the contractor doesn't provide any credit or money back at the end of the project. MEP, FP, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, 
fire protection. NIC or NIS means it's not in the contract or it's not in the scope. It's just another acronym when you see on a bid proposal or other parts of the construction documents. OAC, Owner Architect Contractors Meeting. On large projects, the teams gather on a weekly or bi-weekly basis to discuss general updates about the project and work through higher priority concerns as a team. O&M, Operation and Maintenance. New build, new equipment. These are manuals that the facility and maintenance team use and reference to operate and service their new equipment. The construction team is responsible for compiling all of this, as I mentioned during the owner training portion, and they turn it over at the end of the project. OSHA, or Occupational Safety and Health Administration. OSHA is a regulatory agency in the United States that oversees the safety of workplace environments. They can freely walk onto your construction projects, and if you're in violation of OSHA regulations, that can result in monetary fines or shutdowns of the project. OTB or open to below. On the drawings, this indicates an opening on the floor plan to the floor below. On a job site, openings have to be covered and labeled as such to prevent people from falling through. These temp openings have to be able to bear certain weights and restrictions, so even if people were to walk in them by accident, they would not fall through. PD just stands for product data. This is a type of a submittal, which essentially is the description of the material that the construction team is intending to use. This gets reviewed during the submittal process to ensure that it conforms with the project specifications. Project engineer. This is usually a designation of an individual who's on the construction or design team team, but not yet at the project management experience level. Professional liability insurance is another type of insurance that covers architects and engineers from negligence when producing construction documents. This is also highly recommended if you're completing delegated design as a contractor. Punch list. This is a checks and balance approach for the owner. The architect is responsible to complete a punch list at the end of a project, which identifies items that do not meet the standards of the specifications, at which point it is the contractor's responsibility to correct those items. Project manager. Someone you never see on the job site, but supposedly is involved with managing the project. Project manager's responsibilities are actually to manage risk through forward planning. They're the office counterpart of the superintendent who operates in the field. The project manager gets the material to the job site, and the superintendent gets the material installed on the project. PM or preventative maintenance. Just like getting an oil change on your car, buildings require maintenance, and it's always best to have a maintenance plan instead of waiting for something to break. PPE, personal protective equipment. Ibis vests, safety glasses, steel-toed boots, other requirements depending on the activity or scope that you're completing to be safe. QA, QC, quality assurance, quality control, the process of managing quality to ensure specification standards are met or exceeded during construction. RCP, reflected ceiling plan, this is a type of drawing similar to a floor plan, but shows dimensions, materials, and other key information about the ceiling. RFI or request for information is the formal process of asking a question to clarify intent before bidding or during the construction process. I've got a whole video on RFIs if you want to take a look at my channel for more information. RFP, RFQ, request for proposal, request for quote. It's just another set of acronyms when you're asking for pricing on something. RH, relative humidity, simple but important. When you start finishes on a project such as drywall or installing casework or other products, the building needs to be acclimated as do these products. If they're not, you can get cracks in the wall or warping in your building materials. This is why buildings are temporarily heated in the cold and cooled in the heat to maintain schedules throughout different seasons based on the region you're building in. RO or rough opening. So before installing your window frame and your glazing, you need to frame the opening. The RO is usually a dimension associated with how big you need to frame it for everything to fit in there. That being your air and vapor barrier, your flashings, your frame, and all your caulk joints. SD or schematic design. This is one of the earlier sets of construction drawings, which shows maybe 60 to 70% of building completion that an architect will work through with the owner to get to the DD set. Shop drawings, which is another submittal, but the shop drawings are actually drawn by the installing contractor or manufacturer, and it expands on the details that may not be shown as in depth in the construction documents. Again, it's to show intent of the design and it gets reviewed by the architect or engineer on record. SF, square feet, which is one foot by one foot. It's usually referenced when looking at the size or takeoff of an area. You also may see LF for linear feet, CY for cubic yards. These are all just acronyms for measurements in construction. Specifications, the written instructions and requirements the contractor needs to follow when building a building. SIM or similar, not every detail will be drawn in the construction drawings, so when you see the note SIM, it is usually to save time and space on the drawing set. Submittals, these are not construction documents or contract documents, but rather the process in which all contractors submit their material data, 
drawings, and other items to the design team to show that they are in conformance with the construction documents. The submittal process takes place prior to construction as another checks and balance to ensure the building doesn't get built incorrectly. SOG or slab on grade when you pour concrete on the ground. SOD is slab on deck when you have an elevated pour. SOV or schedule of values a lot of construction projects are actually set up contractually to show transparency and pricing to show that the owner is getting charged per month what is actually getting put in place. So the SOV or schedule of values is a breakup of their total contract amount into smaller sections so that the owner can track along. SOW or scope of work, it's just that. It's the description of what needs to be completed. Superintendent. So I talked about the project manager. The superintendent is actually the counterpart who sits in the field and is the representative who closely manages the on-site field labor and ensures that the building is getting built in alignment with the schedule and specifications. SWPPP, Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan. This is the plan presented by the city to ensure that the waste material during the course of construction does not infiltrate and run off into the city's storm water system. A takeoff. A takeoff just refers to a construction estimate of a particular scope. I did a takeoff of doors, frames, and hardware. There are 20 wood doors and 20 hollow metal doors. TNM, or time and material. It's a means to track costs in the field via a piece of paper or a signed ticket by both parties to agree to. You track field time, you track material, you track equipment, and then it gets signed at the end of the day. This transitions into a change order so that there's not a battle down the road arguing about how much time was actually spent on an activity. TYP or typical is another acronym you might see on a drawing set, meaning that the detail might be typical of all other locations instead of redrawing that detail or symbol multiple times. UL or Underwriters Laboratories is a safety science company that tests products to help provide standards within the construction industry. UNO or unless noted otherwise, it's another note you'll see on the drawing similar to TYP or typical, which means that you are to follow that condition as it's typical unless it is specifically said to otherwise. It helps save space and clutter on the drawing set. VDC, Virtual Design and Construction. Earlier I talked about BIM, but that's getting phased out for this new term VDC. Technology is advancing and a lot more construction projects are built and coordinated using building models. Where building projects have tight spaces and limited timelines for schedule, there's a lot more coordination that happens on the front end to prevent holdups and field clashes or conflicts, VE or value engineering. When a construction budget is too high, VE options can be proposed to help offset or reduce the budget. An example can be a material product that is cheaper than a specified material product. Zoning, local regulations that dictate how a property or areas of land can be used. One eternity later. All right, I appreciate you for sticking around and making it to the end of this video, and I hope you learned something new today. Again, I'm gonna be using these terms in future videos, so it should be a good baseline to help understand when I'm referencing these things. There are tons of other terms and acronyms that I didn't cover, so feel free to drop those in the comment section below. And as always, bye for now.